So today there are a few things I want to talk about. I'm going to start off by talking about where I'm at with my thesis. I'm a grad student at NYU's Interactive Telecommunications program, and the past few weeks I've been giving thesis updates. And today's Thursday, so I'll give a thesis Thursday update. Uh, the topic I want to talk about and the topic that I'm researching is network filters. Now, we all know about how parents can filter uh, the access to the internet for their children to make sure that they don't see adult content. Workplaces filter also making sure there's no adult content coming through or sometimes any other kinds of things that aren't conducive to a work environment. I know some workplaces totally block Facebook. Uh, any job I had didn't, so <laughs> I was on Facebook sometimes at work. Um, sometimes the whole countries block uh, access to information that the government doesn't want, uh, doesn't want their citizens to see. Um, but I want to really focus on how we personally filter the internet. So if you look at social networks and what you read uh, online, you know, what sites you go to, you're kind of filtering in a sense. If I look at what reddits, what subreddits I'm subscribed to, they're all things I'm interested in, but then I'm certainly not seeing things that are challenge my own views or I'm not seeing things that, that are interesting in other realms that, that in, you know, it, it's like in, in the area of like horseback riding, maybe there's something that's interesting to me even though I don't really care about horseback riding and I, you don't necessarily see those things. So when you stick around places like Reddit, Twitter, Google Plus, for me personally, it's only the things that really really interest me and it's only the things, the people that I know that say things that I, I want to hear about. Um, Facebook on the other hand is my collection of people that I know in real life and their interests are have a huge, huge broad array and so I see things that I don't necessarily agree with or care about but it's very interesting to see. And so I like, I like having a little bit of both. I like going to a place like Reddit where I'm seeing topics that are really, really focused on what I want to see, filtering out most of the noise, hoping that if something from another, uh, a, some other topic area will sort of bubble up and catch my attention. And I'm wondering if you yourself do any filtering. And I want to know if you on Facebook filter out people that you don't agree with. Um, I try not to because I do want to see how people are doing. I don't want to filter out everything that they say if I don't agree or don't like with the kinds of things that they post. I do want to see how they're doing and what's going on. And also, it's just interesting to see what, what the sort of maybe sometimes what someone who disagrees with you, it's interesting to see why. Um, so I'm curious to know what kind of filtering you do and if you've thought about how we filter the internet for ourselves by what sites we go to. Um, if, you, uh, if you're interested in cell phones, if you live in the United States, um, uh, cell phone unlocking is being talked about a lot. Uh, we just had a petition to uh, the White House to say, uh, you know, hey, Obama, make it legal for us to unlock our cell phones. Um, and so uh, the White House responded saying, yeah, it ought to be. Uh, there's a piece on NPR, All Tech Considered by Steve Henn right now. If you're curious about what the deal is with that, with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, check that out. They really distill it down really, really well. It's a great story. Um, those of you who've been following this vlog also know that I've been have another bit of a cell phone dilemma, and that is uh, I'm an iPhone user that is considering switching away from the iPhone. Andy Anatko from the Chicago Sun Times and Mac Break Weekly, one of my favorite podcasts, just uh, posted the third part in a three part series about why he's switching from the iPhone to Android. And I think it's significant because he is a, a Mac user, he's been in a long time iPhone user, I think pretty much since day one. And he lays it out really well. He gives a few different reasons why he is now totally on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Better keyboards, larger screen, um, better communication between apps. I think that's a critical one. Uh, for us who are computer users, we're used to our, uh, you know, you know power, if we're a computer power user, we're used to uh, connecting apps together or applications, programs, command line things. They can connect together. On the iPhone, we can't really connect together because all the apps are very much sandboxed. And it's great that iOS has deep Twitter integration, but why should we wait for Apple to allow us to do that? What about the new services that come out? I don't want to wait for Apple to allow that. So that's another great reason that uh, I think Android is winning over iOS right now. Uh, another reason is customization. You know, there's not a lot of customization on the iPhone, and that was a concern that I had as well. So go to Tech Hive, check out Andy Anatko's uh, piece about it. It's wonderful. Uh, and also, uh, I'm wrapping up, tomorrow I'm wrapping up the third week of these vlogs. I want to hear your feedback. Send me an email at matt at mattrichardson.com. I want to know what you think of it generally. What content was interesting? What content sucked? Uh, what you think of the videos? And I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. Bye.